So we're going from improper fractions to mixed numbers. Again, there's a long way to do it, and then there's a shortcut. Learn the long way, understand it, and then do the shortcuts. So what 8 thirds is telling us is the denominator, the 3, is the size of the part. So if I were to model that, it would be represented as a third size part. And the numerator tells us how many of those parts we have. So here's 3 thirds, and that's really 1. And then if I do another one, so that's another 3 thirds. So that's another whole. So in here, we already know that there's 3 thirds, another 3 thirds, that's 6 thirds. I need to represent more. So I'm going to show my last 2 thirds here. So visually, what this is saying is that it's a third sized part. So this is broken into um, um, a third sized part. And the numerator tells us how many we have. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces that we are talking about. Then if you just look at this, what you can actually see is there are holes, whole amounts that are in here. So here's one whole amount and one whole amount. So if we were to write it as a mixed number, we have two whole amounts. And what's left over is our two thirds. Okay, so modeling it is one way to visualize how you're going from an improper fraction to a mixed number. Here's two other ways you can try it. You can think of it as <clears throat> division. It's basically division. So if I think of 8 divided by 3, if I think 8 divided by 3, what's the closest number? 3 times what gets me close to 8? Mm, 3 times 2. So that's where you get your whole amount from. Then I multiply it, and what's left over? There's two left over. That's where we get our numerator from. Two what though? Two two thirds, because that is the size of the piece we're still talking about. So as you get into division, what you would write is two and two thirds, and that's exactly what you have as your mixed number. So if you think of division, you can write it out like this if you want, or you can actually do a lot of it in your head. So if I think of it in my head, I think 3 times what gets me close to 8, uh, 3 times 2. Uh, 3 times 2 is 6. What's the difference between 6 and 8? There's 2 there, and then it's going to be a 2 third sized part. So three different ways that you can manipulate this and move it. Uh, when you are going back and forth with fractions, going the other way is just as important. So in another example, I'll show you how that works out. So you can't learn this by watching. Get some paper and try it. If you don't need an explanation, skip ahead to the answer and just check your work. Okay, so the three ways we think of it. If we were to think, okay, inside here, inside here, there are whole amounts. How do I take out a chunk, a whole amount? In terms of fifth sized pieces, I take out five fifths. So that's like drawing it and then shading in all of them. That's one whole represented as five fifths. Then I see what's left over. So can I take out another five fifths? Yeah, because five and five, that's that's 10 fifths. That's still, I still have some room here. So I have 11 fifths. How do I represent it? Here's 10 fifths plus one more fifth. And there is my 11 fifths expanded out. Then to turn it into a mixed number, I say, well, how many holes did I have? Here's one hole and another hole, and then my leftover one fifth. And so my final answer is two and one fifth. So that's the expanded way. If I think of it in my head, I'm thinking five times what gets me close to 11? I'm dividing, but thinking of multiplication. So five times, five times two. Five times two is 10. Between 10 and 1 and 11, there's, there's one left over, one fifth that's left over, okay? So expanded, mental division, and if you really get stuck on a hard one, then you can just do regular division. My left over is 1, so that becomes my numerator, and my fifth size part. So all of it works out. So you can choose whatever method works for you. So write it down and try it. The, let's do the, the division one first. So if I think of dividing, I can just do uh, 28 divided by 6. 28 divided by 6. 6 times what is close to 28? 6 times mm, 4. 
6 times 4 is 24. That would be my subtraction, and I have 4 left over. So my, my mixed number will be 4 holes. My leftover is my numerator. And my uh, denominator is the size of the part. So 4 and 4 sixths. This can all be in your head as well. Remember that we do want to reduce this and simplify it normally, but I'll leave it there just so we can compare it to the expanded form. So when we do the expanded form, what we're thinking is how many holes can I, can I pull out of this? And how do I represent a hole as a sixth sized part? It's going to be represented as six sixths. So there's one hole, another one, that's six, 12, 18. I can't do another one. So in the process of doing this, you kind of are doing the shortcut. So I'm saying, all right, four times six, that's 24. Between 24 and 28, what's that leftover amount? That's four six that are left. So how many holes do I have? I have four holes and my leftover four sixths. Okay, so 33 sevenths. Write it down, try it. The division method, if you want to stick to that shortcut, I have 33 and I divide it by 7. 7 times what is close to 33? Hmm, 7 times 4, 7 times 5, 7 times 4 is 28. So then I do my subtraction and I will get 4 and 5 sevenths. You can do this in your head as well. You think. 7 times what gets me close to 33? 7 times 4 is 28. So I hold that whole amount. Then I think, what's the difference between 28 and 33? There's 5. So that becomes my numerator, and I'm still talking about a 7th sized part, so that part stays as my denominator. So if you think of this in the expanded form, it's the same thing. You're actually doing the work, basically, that you've already done. I'm thinking, okay, there's a 7 sevenths, that's one hole. There's another one that's 14. Another one is 21. Another one is 28. Can I do one more? 35? No. So I stop and I say, what's my leftover? So 28. And then there's five sevenths that are left. So that's, that's here. It's four holes. So I turn these all into ones. And my leftover amount, this becomes 4 and 5 sevenths. So if this makes sense to you, keep doing it. Eventually you're going to cut that out because when you have a large number here, you are not going to want to be writing all of this out. You're, you will eventually either do it in your head mentally or you're going to do a division, um, a division house to, to get your answer. Okay, The expanded way first, I think how many holes can I represent in here, so eight eighths. So five times eight, I know five times eight is 40. If I do another eight, that's too much. So one, two, three, four, five. Five times eight is 40 plus my leftover six eighths. Then I already can see, I can visually see these are all of my holes that I have taken out plus my leftover six eighths. What is that? That's going to be five holes and six eighths. And really we should be simplifying. So get in the habit of doing that. So it will be five and I can divide both of these by two. So then I will get a three fourths as my final answer. So when you want to think of the mental strategy, I'm thinking eight times what is close to 46. Well, eight times five is 40. So there's my whole amount. And then what's left over between 40 and 46, there's six eighths that are left. So there's my six eighths, and then I'm going to simplify that. So knowing your math facts is actually really going to be useful. That, that will never go away. So you always have to practice your multiplication tables. Um, that also means you should be knowing your division table, your division facts, and um, really getting fast with those because then when you have a larger number and you do the division, like you wouldn't write it like this. This is kind of easy still, but here are the, here's the regular division is the regular step. So when you have your leftover, 
this becomes your numerator, and then that goes there. So five and six eighths. So uh, try try one more problem. So let's say let's say we had a number like this, eighty three sevenths. What I might want to start doing is is listing out my my steps. I could start thinking, hmm, seven 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 seven. That's twenty one. That's going to be a lot to write out. I mean, you could, but it's just a lot. So in this case, when I see that it's a really large number, as long as I understand the concept and the idea that there are whole amounts that are in here, whenever you have an improper fraction, it's more than one, then I can just use the strategy of either mentally calculating a division problem or writing out the division problem. 83 divided by seven, I would go through my regular division, which I should know. So I would do my, all of these steps are exactly the same as they are for regular division. Uh, I would have 11, and then I would have six left over. So now this tells me my whole amount is 11. So I have 11, and what's left over? Six sevenths. So there's my answer. And you can think of it like this also, if I want to try the reverse, if I want to go backwards and use the shortcut, what I'm saying is I'd have 11 times 7, which is 77, plus my 6, which is 83, and then they would still be the seventh sized parts and that would stay the same. So both of these methods, they are basically exactly the reverse of each other. So knowing one kind of helps you know the other one and you need both of them to work with fractions really well. Uh, thanks for watching. Just kidding. One more. Uh, so if I think of writing out the whole amounts, I'm going to be taking six sixths out of this. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking along the way. Okay, six, 12, 18, 24. I can still go 30, 36. Can I do another? Yeah, 42. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven times six is forty-two. So in the process of doing this, you're you're kind of really doing the shortcut in your head. You're just putting your thinking out in front of you. So seven. So I could I could write it down here. I'll do that in a second. But if I have forty-two, my leftover amount is going to be one one sixth that's left. Then I just say, well, how many holes did I have? I had one. You definitely don't want to be writing this out for every question, but as long as you know how to do it once and you understand what's going on, then you can cut that out, definitely. So how many holes are there? There's seven holes, and what's left over is one-sixth, so seven and one-sixth. Um, again, if you go backwards, if you think between going to mixed numbers and fractions, what we started in the other video is we started here, and we said, how can I turn this into a fraction? Well, I'm going to represent my 7 as all of the 1s, and my leftover 1 6 will be here. Then I represent all of my 1s as their fraction. So I'm going to choose the 6 6 because that is the size of the piece. And then I add all of these up over here. So really, the two methods are interchangeable. That's just exactly the reverse of each other. So if you know one, you can kind of work backwards to get to get the other one, but you have to know both of them. So you can do this if you want, and you can also just think division. 43 divided by six. Six times what is closest to 43? Six times seven is 42. Between 42 and 43, that's one sixth that's gonna be left over, okay? So uh, hopefully that helps. If it doesn't help, you have to look up another video. There is tons of stuff. All you do is search improper fractions to mixed numbers and um, find a method that works for you or a strategy that you understand because you have to know this to be comfortable in math and to um, go forward. So thanks for watching.